In this video, we'll take a very brief dive into domestic hot water systems for simple single zone or, you know, single family home models like the one that we've been looking at here. Now, domestic hot water systems can become very, very complicated very quickly when you have multiple pieces of equipment, lots of different piping elements, recirculation elements, heating elements, uh, tanks, etc. We're going to kind of restrict ourselves just to a really, really basic system for purposes of explaining the way that Honeybee pH works in the example here. But certainly the tools are capable of modeling quite complex systems, especially once we get into non-residential and, and multifamily residential projects. Um, but, but again, we're going to kind of restrict ourselves to just a very simple set of, of inputs here. So we'll model a, a simple system with one tank, a heating element, and sort of see how that flows through into our woofy passive model. So if we were going to model a domestic hot water system in Woofy Passive, how would we do that? Let's take a look at how the inputs would work here in Woofy Passive, and then we'll shift over to our Rhino scene and take a look at how we might do that in Honeybee PH. So I'm here in my Woofy file. So same Woofy file that we've been working in where we built out, you know, our air conditioning system, our heat pump, uh, the other the other elements here. So if we wanted to now add a domestic hot water um, a piece of domestic hot water equipment to our, our project here, I would come to my ideal air system. I would just come over to new. And then I would, uh, first of all, associate it with hot water. And then I would define the type of equipment. Uh, in Woofy Passive, we can you know, use all, all sorts of different types of equipment, boilers, heat pumps, solar collectors, etc. Um, in order to keep things really simple for this example, let's just model a direct electric resistance heating element for our hot water. So not a great idea from a energy efficiency standpoint, but quite simple from a modeling standpoint. So we have a heating element with a, you know, COP of one, uh, right? 100% efficient. Um, uh, so we don't need a lot of complicated inputs and attributes for a piece of equipment like that. So we have a heating element for our hot water now. So that's uh, basically sorted. You can see now down here that we're getting different results for our total energy consumption. So we have a heating element here. And if we wanted some sort of water storage, we would have to add that as a separate piece of equipment. So we would come over to uh, new, we would make a new piece of hot water equipment. And then for my drop down list here, I would choose uh, water storage from the list. Now water storage does have some attributes that need to be configured so I could come over here and I would come down to water storage and in water storage I would properly set it up so maybe it's an 80 gallon tank um, uh, of course these um, the tank thermal storage losses BTUs per hour degree Fahrenheit is not a number that you'll ever know that's like a number for European specified equipment so you're not going to get that for North American equipment um, and so let's just put in like a seven or something like that like a conservative value there let's just say it is within the thermal envelope and you know maybe we could give some more values maybe our maybe we store our water at 140 degrees something like that Notice down here now we're getting new source energy targets. Um, we're taking into account the thermal losses here of our tank, both in terms of our cooling energy, but also our total source energy. So that's how we would build this out in Woofy Passive. Um, and the process can be very similar back in our Rhino file. So I'll go ahead and close this and we'll go back to our Rhino file and take a look at how we're going to model domestic hot water systems. So I'm back in my same file uh, as ever. Here's my, you know, simple little building. And I'm in my grasshopper scene and we can add a new domestic hot water system um, basically anywhere in this chain. So we're going to use some new in our honeybee pH rollout. We're going to use some of these new hot water components. So again, we can put them pretty much anywhere, but I'm going to just propose that we put them kind of right here after our mechanicals. So let's just put them right here after mechanicals and make a new division to start with. And then we'll set this up as our hot water section. So we'll do this to kind of prep everything. So hot water. And the way that the hot water system is going to work is going to be very, very similar to all the other components that we've looked at so far. We're going to build a hot water system and then we're going to apply that hot water system to one or more components. So here in my Honeybee pH rollout, I've got a whole section dedicated to hot water. And you can see here that we have a hot water system. And then an apply hot water system components. Those are going to be the two main components that we want to take a look at. We're going to build a system and then apply the system to one or more Honeybee rooms. So let's grab this. Uh, create system component and drop that onto the canvas and let's grab this apply system component and drop that onto the canvas 
So what do we have here? So in our create system component, it's already glowing orange, so it's already complaining about something. So the first thing that this component needs to know is, well, what type of system would you like to model? And so we need to give it a system type. And the type of system, the types of systems that we can input are over here in Honeybee Energy. So in Honeybee Energy in HVAC, down here on the bottom, notice that we have a series of Honeybee Service Hot Water templates. And if we drop those onto the canvas here, we have a whole range of different types of Honeybee service hot water systems that we could create. So let's create an electric hot water system. We supply that to system type, and now this seems to be working properly. Let's take a look at what we get by default. So we'll take a look at the, the default system which is being created. So we do get a service hot water system, and there's nothing in it. So no tanks, no heaters, no branch piping, no research piping, no tap points, nothing, right? So we get a blank system. The system is, is working at least. And so the system can now be added to one or more honeybee rooms. So we have our honeybee rooms over here. So we have our honeybee rooms, room one and room two. And if we feed the honeybee rooms into this add system or apply system component, we take the hot water system and we apply the system here. This system is now being applied to these honeybee rooms. We can then grab this, supply this to the next link in the chain, and there we go. So we're now adding our new hot water system to these rooms. Now, of course, we need to add some uh, equipment to this system in order for it to do anything useful. So let me just kind of rearrange here a little bit. So the first thing that we would like to do is um, let's add a let's add a tank. Let's say that we have a hot water tank in our system here. So I'm going to come back to my Honeybee pH rollout. In my Honeybee pH rollout, you'll notice that there's a component here to create a service hot water tank. And let's take a look at what the defaults are for this tank before we plug it in. So let's see. So this tank by default is, has a storage capacity of 300 liters. So it's about 80 gallons, 79 gallons. Standby losses of four. This will be in, um, what's standby losses? Standby losses will be in watts per, watts per degree Kelvin. Um, yeah, so that'll be equate to about seven or eight uh, BTUs per hour degree Fahrenheit or so, and, and a bunch of other parameters here. So we can obviously set up any of these parameters over here. Maybe we want to give this one a name. We'll call this Ed's Domestic Hot Water Tank. And we'll give that the display name there. There we go. Um, and that's really all we have to do to set up the tank. We can now take the tank and plug the tank in so we can add our tank to our system. So we now have a tank flowing through into our hot water system. So the other element that we would like to add at this point would be a heater. So we'll come up here to heater. And I'll grab this hot water heater and drop this onto the canvas. Now this one's gonna yell at us when we put it on here. It's gonna say, hey, I don't know what type of heater I am. Please give me a type. You can see here there's some options for the different types of heaters. So it wants to know what type of heater it is so it can configure the inputs properly. So that's pretty easy. We can come up here to our hot water heater types, grab this, drop it onto the canvas, and then select the type we want. So you can notice here, we've got all sorts of different types of heaters. Let's use electric resistance and say that you are an electric resistance heater and it's gonna configure itself properly. If we gave it a different number or a different type, if we said, oh, you're a, you're a monthly COP, notice that we'll get different user inputs here. So this component sort of reshapes itself based on the type that it is. And we don't really need to give much information here. This default heater will work out of the box, right? So a percent covered, 100, in condition space, true. So that's pretty much the only uh, parameters for an electric resistance system. Uh, you know, these are very simple systems. So we can just take this heater and plug it right in to our heaters. And now this heater and this tank are being applied to our honeybee rooms. So we can now, at this point, come across to our writer. We'll go to our writer here, and we will write this out to our desktop, as always. And now I'll go back to my Woofy Passive. And I will navigate to the, de to the desktop. I'll say File Open, go to my desktop, and filter for XML files. Open up the one with the newest timestamp there. Say OK. And let's see what we have now in our systems. We have our ideal air system here, and our ideal air system has mechanical ventilation, obviously, heat pump for heating, 
great. Heat pump for cooling, awesome. An electric resistance heating for domestic hot water and a water storage system for domestic hot water. So the, that all looks like it's flowing through properly. If we come down here to our electric resistance heater, um, you know, we just have a funny name because we never gave it a name. That's fine. There's no parameters there. And then in our tank, notice our tank over here has our default values flowing through. So 300 liters, it's about, you know, 80 gallons. We've got our values coming through there. And these parameters are all being set by our Rhino components. So everything looks like it's working properly. We should at this point be able to recalculate shading and then get some total results. There we are. So we're, we have a total source energy of just over 6,000 kilowatt hours per person per year. Now for a very simple domestic hot water system, that's pretty much all there is to it. There is and there are tools to build out things like domestic hot water piping go back to Rhino for a second. So of course there are components up here for things like branch piping, recirculation piping, um, these uh, uh, and additional system configuration options can be can be set up for uh, to, to model even very complex hot water systems. Um, maybe we'll take a look at that in future videos. Uh, for now we'll just leave it here. We're not, we don't need to worry too much about it. Yes we could model our piping for sure that would make it even more accurate but uh, maybe we'll come back and do that in a future lesson. Um, I don't want to do that right now, though. Um, if for, for the most part, at this point, um, we, we have a, a, enough data here in, in our model at this point that we're getting believable, uh, realistic values for things like heating energy demand, cooling energy demand, source energy demand. So at this point, there's sort of two questions that I'd like to ask. How are we doing? So we're getting, you know, for instance, a heating energy demand of 23.8. Is that good or is that bad? Is that high? Is that low? How does that compare to the FIAS targets for this particular climate in this building type? So where do we get those targets? How do we build those targets into our model? And then what can we do to reduce our energy consumption if we are over those demand uh, limits? And that will necessitate going back to the very beginning taking a much closer look at elements related to the envelope of our building. Now, if you've been following along with this video series, you know that we skipped right over the envelope of the building. As soon as we had some valid honeybee masses, we jumped right into configuring mechanical systems, setting up loads and ventilation rates, etc. And that was to get us to a point here where we can calculate some reasonable results. And now that we're getting some believable results, we got the we got most of our system working. We can now circle back around and turn our attention back to the, the go back to the very beginning and say what type of walls are we going to be building what type of insulation and in ceiling are we going to have what type of window products are we going to use we can build out things like shading for our scene in much more depth so all of that can be configured and, and, and built out in quite a bit more detail so we'll, we'll jump into those pieces in the next few lessons now that our mechanical systems and our overall uh, sort of building configuration is largely set up so hopefully your model is working and you're getting results close-ish, maybe not perfectly exactly the same if you have some slightly different inputs than I do, but close-ish to the ones that we're seeing here. So I think we'll leave it there. And as I said, in future videos, we'll come back and dive into uh, questions around certification and, and envelope and overall energy performance.